The National Broadcasting Company presents Joel McRae in Tales of the Texas Rangers. Tonight, transcribed from Hollywood, another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Texas, more than 260,000 square miles. And 50 men who make up the most famous and oldest law enforcement body in North America. From the files of the Texas Rangers come these stories based on fact. Only names, dates, and places are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Case for tonight, The Hatchet. It is 8.30 a.m. Sunday, May 16th, 1941. The Halleck family of Rock Point, Texas, is preparing to leave for church. You want any more toast, Jim? Nope. All I want is another cup of coffee. I'll get it myself. Why don't you sit down and eat? Well, I would if I could get that boy to the table. Robert? Robert! I'm coming, Ma. You've been saying that for half an hour. Your eggs are getting cold and we'll be late for church. All right, all right. And never mind that all right business. When your mother called you, you just come a-running. Gee whiz, Pa, I gotta wash my face, Donna. I'll be right there. Well, see the jar, you'll go without your breakfast. Now, you come sit down, Hattie. No need of your stomach being empty. Just coffee will do for me. Seems like the older a boy gets, the harder it is to get him out of bed in the morning. What time did he get in last night? After 11. Him and Sadie Lewis went to the picture show. I told him I wanted him home at 10 o'clock nights. Oh, Jim, it was Saturday night. He goes to school all week. Well, school will soon be over. He'll be working with me in the store all summer. Maybe he won't feel much like staying out half the night when he's been on his feet all day. Look at the time. Robert! I'm here, Pa. I'm here. Well, it's about time. I'll get your breakfast, but the eggs will be like rubber. I don't want anything to eat. I'm not hungry. Well, why didn't you say so before your ma wasted her time and the food? You gotta eat something. I'll have breakfast when we get back from church. Sure, that'll be fine. You can make more work for your ma that way. Gee, Pa, I just don't feel hungry now. Oh, leave him alone, Jim. I'll get him something later. I'll just put the dishes in to soak. You two want to get out of my way? Why don't you go next door and tell Mr. Driscoll we're about ready to leave? Uh, is he riding with us again? Yes, he's riding with us again, so stop sulking about it. Come on. You ought to be glad to have your teacher for a neighbor. You wouldn't be at the head of your graduating class if it weren't for his helping you. I see enough of him in school without seeing him Sunday, too. Yeah. Well, when you get away to college in the fall, you might be wishing you had somebody like him close by to give you a hand. Ring the bell. He don't answer. Maybe he went on. He'd have told us. And I didn't hear his car. Come on, maybe he's out in the back. Mr. Driscoll! That's funny. Run up the back steps and take a look in the kitchen window. Oh, why don't we just go without him? Will you do like I tell you? Okay. See anything? No, he didn't. Pa! Pa! What is it, son? What's the matter? Look at him. Lying there on the floor. Oh. Pa, what is it? What happened to him? Come away, son. Don't look anymore. Come away. I gotta call the sheriff. It, it looks like he's been murdered. Sheriff Alvin Jeffers took one look at the scene of the crime and put in a call for the assistance of the Texas Rangers. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned. Uh, mighty bloody job, Jace. No weapon in sight. Nope. Judging by the marks, though, it was something with two edges, one blunt and one sharp. Probably a hatchet, Sheriff. Either that or two weapons. It's possible, but not likely. 
You say the J.P.'s been here? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. As soon as we're finished, the body will be moved into the funeral home for autopsy. Establish time of death. That'll help. Where'd your call come from? Neighbors next door, the Halleck's. Man, wife, and son. Man and boy spotted Driscoll through the window when they come to get him for a lift to church. I'd like to talk to him. Sure, I told him to stick to home. Well, we can go out back and hop the fence. Avoid that crowd out front. Good. Yeah, front room looked like Driscoll went in big for books. Yeah, he was an English teacher at the high school. Halleck's boy Robert was in one of his classes, I think. Driscoll live alone? Mm-hmm. Widower. Here, step on this box and hop the fence. Uh, you go ahead. I can get over without it. Okay. <clears throat> well, Halleck saw us coming. There he is at the back door. Uh, howdy, sir. Ranger, come on in. Thanks. Ranger Pearson, Jim Halleck. Howdy, howdy. Oh, uh, my wife Hattie and my boy Robert. Uh, howdy. Howdy, Ranger. Uh, you found Driscoll's body this morning? Me and Robert. Saw it through the window. What time? Oh, about quarter to nine. That's when we always leave for services. Oh, Jace, I ought to call my office. Have the funeral home come for the body now. All right, go ahead. Yeah, mind if I use your phone, Halleck? Help yourself. I'll show you where it is, Sheriff. Oh, you'd better stay, Robert. Okay. You and your dad found the body. Would you mind, Mrs. Halleck? Not at all. In here, Sheriff. Thank you. Either of you see Driscoll yesterday or last night? We both saw him outside last night, a little after six. I was coming home from the store. I sell groceries. Robert was outside waiting for me so he could take the car. Mm, big date, huh? <laughs> yeah. What was Driscoll doing? Digging a flower border on his lawn. You talked to him? Just called to him after Robert took the car and drove off. Asked if he planned on riding to church with us. No sense taking two cars when neighbors are going to the same place. I see. Is that all? That's all. You didn't hear anything during the evening or the night? Nope. Me and Hattie turned in a little after nine. How about you, Robert? What time did you get home? Um. What time did you get home? You can tell him. I know you was late. Your mother heard you come in. A little after 11. Where were you? To a picture show with Sadie Lewis. What did you see? I, I don't remember the name of it. Bing Crosby's in it. Case, you gonna be much longer? Oh, no, Sheriff. Why? I spoke to my office. One of my deputies got a report. Rancher named Finney chased somebody off his place with a shotgun last night. Doorbell, Hattie. I'm going. Uh, did the deputy think the report might have anything to do with the Driscoll's murder? Well, who knows? Fellow Finney saw was doing something around a cattle tank, though. Yeah, good place to get rid of a weapon. Cattle tanks have been used before. Well, maybe we ought to go out and take a look. Yeah. Robert? Gene to see you. Hi, Bob. Hi. Hi, Mr. Halleck, Sheriff. Hello, Gene. Gee, I just drove in to see if Bob wanted to go out to the shack and camp, and I saw that crowd in front of next door. Somebody killed old man Driscoll, huh? Yeah. I can't go with you today. Well, yeah, I guess not. Are you helping the sheriff, Ranger? We're helping each other. Well, boy, I sure hope you catch that guy. Mr. Driscoll was the best teacher we ever had. Uh, we'll try to square things for him, Gene. Come on, Jace. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your help. We may want to talk to you again later. Uh, you're sure welcome, Ranger. Bye. Bye, ma'am. So long, folks. Bye. Bye. So long, Ranger. Who was that kid, the one who just came in? You mean Gene? No, her name's Gene McCready. Pamela Roberts. They go to school together. Why? Just wondering. Robert Halleck ever give any of you any trouble around here? Yeah, we'll take my car. No, he's a good kid. Why? I just got a feeling he was covering up for something, that's all. Well, like what? Well, if I knew that, I wouldn't be wondering about it. How far to Finney's place? Turn off to the right about six miles out. Just this side of the Lewis place. The Lewis place? Well, Robert Halleck says that he was out at a movie last night with a girl named Sadie Lewis. Yeah, she lives out there. Mike Lewis' daughter. Only 15, but a big girl for her age. <laughs> Lewis watches her like a hawk. I'd like to stop by the Lewis place and talk to that girl. Okay, we can go out there after we check at Finney's. Well, right here's about where he was when I spotted him. I called, but he started to run. I threw a load of buckshot after him. You didn't see who it was? No, I didn't. I was too far off, about 300 feet back to all the house. What time was that, Finney? Oh, just before 11 o'clock last night. Wasn't that kind of late for you to be out here? Well, I'd been visiting. I was cutting across the ranch, walking home. From where? Mike Lewis's place. 
We get together Saturday nights, play cards. Oh, no, no, not for money, just passing time. You always carry a shotgun when you're passing time? Well, matter of fact, I do. Bag a jackrabbit once in a while, going, coming between here and Mike's place. So I always throw the gun just in case. I see. <laughs> I see better than you do, Jace. I've eaten out here. Mrs. Finney can do more things with a jackrabbit in a pot than most women can do with a chicken. <laughs> okay, I was just checking. Now, about the fellow you saw. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, when he didn't answer my call, I fluffed him with a shot. Don't think I hit him, though. No. A little too far. Barely saw him as it was. Uh, which way did he take off? Well, that way. Highway's about a mile across country there. You chase him? Yep, sure did. But I reckon he was a lot younger than me. Well, what makes you say that? Well, after two minutes of running, I was a puffing like an engine in a tunnel. He was pulling away with every jump. Is there anything around here he might have been trying to steal? No, not a thing. Unless he was trying to make off with a cow, and that'd be nothing to try on foot. Well, Sheriff, guess we'd better chuck our boots and hop in there. Uh, Ain't my cattle tank. That's right, Finney. But what for? If we're lucky, the weapon that was used in the killing of the high school teacher, Driscoll. The cattle tank was big. The bottom was covered deep with a couple of inches of oozing mud and slime. And we slithered around in it for almost half an hour. Pretty thick along the bottom, Jace. Yeah, it sure is. I was going to have it cleaned out next month. Looks like we're going to have to save you the trouble and the expense. We'll have to call a pumping crew, Sheriff. Yeah, it looks that way. Hey, give me a hand up, Penny. All right, now, easy. Uh, thanks. Wait over here, Jace, and we'll boost you out. Okay, Sheriff. We're sure gonna feel silly if we have this pumped out and there's nothing here. We'll feel sillier if we don't have it done and there is something here that turns up later. I think we ought to... What's the matter, Jace? Uh, feel something here under my foot. Yeah, I felt it coming over this way, too. Some stones in the mud. No, this is metal. Wait, I'll get it. Ooh. What is it, Jace? Look for yourself, Sheriff. Just about what we're looking for. A hatchet. You are listening to Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. We continue now with tonight's case, The Hatchet, an authentic story from the files of the Texas Rangers. the murder weapon, all right. The blood had been washed away from most of it, but there was skin tissue and hair that had stuck to the blunt end, and... Well, I reckon that's it, all right, Jace. But who threw it away on my place, and why? The killer wanted to get rid of it in a place he thought nobody'd be liable to find it. Must have thought of this spot last night. That means he knew the place. He wouldn't cross the range on foot unless he did. You say he ran off that way? Uh, that's right. Like Sheriff said, highway's about a mile... He could have left a car there he was getting back to, or he might have cut off in another direction when you lost him. You have horses here, don't you, Finney? Why, sure, sure, but nothing like the one you're towing in that trailer behind your car. It's really a horse, Ranger. I think so, too. What I want is a mount for the sheriff here. Where do you figure on riding, Jace? Out on the range, see if we can pick up a trail. I'll unload charcoal and start ahead, and you walk back to the ranch house and get one of Finney's horses and catch up to me. <laughs> Easy, easy, boy. Find anything? Tracks, all right. Not too heavy on this ground, though. They're easy to lose. Yeah, but this is a straight shot from the ridge. Looks like he was sure going for the road, all right. No doubt about it. If he left a car there, we might be able to find some tire marks where he parked. Afraid you're going to be stymied there, Jace. Why? County just worked the roads over. Shoulders are all fresh gravel. Oh? What's the shortest way to the Lewis Ranch? Go back for the car or keep riding? Yeah, we'd save a little time going back for the car, not much. Well, charcoal's full of run. Let's give him a chance for a workout. Come on. Yeah, yeah. The Lewis Ranch was big and well kept, but there was something dismal and brooding about it. When we got inside, I knew what it was. It was as though the place were reflecting the personality of the heavy-browed man who owned it. So you want to see my daughter, huh? That's right. What about? 
Just want to ask her where she was last night? She was into the movie house with Robert Halleck. Uh, we'd like a little more information than that, Mike. The ranger... I know is... everything my daughter does. I can tell you anything you want to know. That may be so, Mr. Lewis, but we still want to see her. That's an official request. I'll call her. Sadie! Yes, Paul? Come into the house. Yes, Paul? Into the parlor. Oh, I didn't know anybody was here. Sheriff and the ranger want to talk to you. They don't think you and Robert was at the show last night. Nobody said that. You don't have to say it. Look. If you can't keep out of this, you can take your mind-reading act into another room until we're finished. It'd be better if you didn't interfere, Mike. Go ahead, ask. Maybe I'll be interested in the answers, too. Sadie, don't be nervous. Just tell the truth. Were you with Robert Halleck last night? Yes. Where'd you go? We, we went... Where did you go? To the movie. Remember the name of the picture? The new one with, with Bing Crosby. You saw that with me a month ago when I took you to Sweetwater. Oh, I saw it again. There's no other show to see in town. Is there... Robert brought you the ticket stubs, didn't he, Pa? Brought you the ticket stubs? That's right, Ranger. Brought me the stubs. When my daughter's supposed to be someplace. I want to make sure she's there. I'm not gambling on being fed any lies. No, I can see that. You're not gambling that your girl might tell you the truth either, given the chance. Reckon the law's got nothing to say about that. I reckon not. Let me have that package, Sheriff. Yeah, here. What's in it? Just something I want you to look at. Hatchet. Yeah. You ever see this before? No. How about you, Sadie? You ever see this before? No, sir, I never. Why are you asking us about it? Just routine. This is the weapon used to kill Driscoll, the high school teacher. <gasps> All right, Sheriff. Wrap it up again. Let's go. Sorry to have bothered you, Mr. Lewis. Yeah. You ready, Sheriff? Yeah. Goodbye, Mike. Sadie. Bye. Bye. Sadie, you've been lying to me. Answer me! Well, looks like Sadie's in for a rough time, Jase. Yeah, she wasn't telling the truth. He knows it. Her story ties in with Robert Halleck's, Jase. I know. Oh, oh, oh. Be dark by the time we get back to Finney's place. Movie house open tonight? Sure. Why? I want to talk to the manager. The theater was a small-town showplace. The manager couldn't remember seeing Robert Halleck and Sadie Lewis. He referred us to the ticket taker. The ticket taker turned out to be Robert Halleck's pal, Gene McCready. Come on, Gene, talk up. Was Robert here for the show last night, or wasn't he? I... I, I don't know. He's your best friend, and you were on the door last night. If he came in, you saw him. Yeah, he was here. Did he stay for the whole show? No. No, he didn't stay for any of it. How do you know? Did you see him leave before it was over? Well, he, uh, he didn't even go in. He, he just stopped by to get a couple of ticket stubs from me. So that's it. Why didn't you tell us that right off? Because I, I promised Bob that if anybody asked, I'd say him and Sadie was here. Well, why would anybody ask? Bob thought Sadie's father might. He's asked me before when they were supposed to be here. Well, I guess that's what we wanted, Jason. Yeah, it's part of it, not all of it. Gene... I want you to forget that I asked you anything, understand? Yes, sir. Let's go, Sheriff. I guess we better pick up Robert Halleck and the Lewis girl, Jace. Not yet. All we know is they didn't see the show. That isn't enough. Don't see why not. This wasn't just a transient thing. Driscoll didn't have no enemies, unless it was one of his pupils hated him. We can narrow it down to one student, though. Not until we've checked on all of them. I'm going to sleep on this tonight. When school opens tomorrow, I'm going out there. Driscoll had been a popular teacher at Rock Point High, but he had an iron-bound code of ethics where honesty was concerned, and that was the key I needed. I found the answer in a batch of test papers he'd been grading. I took the papers back to the sheriff's office. Morning, Jace. Morning. Find anything out the school? Plenty. Look at these. Mm, what are they? English class test papers of Robert Halleck and Gene McCready. Uh, I see. Halleck's mark's pretty high. 94. Yeah. Hey, only half the answers on McCready's paper have been checked. His isn't graded. Compare them and you'll see why. His answer to every single question is exactly the same as Halleck's, all the way down the line. Driscoll must have noticed it while he was marking. Hmm. 
You think McCready was cribbing his answers from Bob Halleck's paper? Halleck was at the head of the class. McCready was just barely hanging on. Those papers were clipped together in the drawer of Driscoll's desk with this slip of paper. A few notes scribbled on it in Driscoll's handwriting. Here, read what it says. Yeah. An obvious case of cheating. Flunk McCready. If Halleck knew of this, advise principal neither should be permitted to graduate. Well. The test was on Friday. Driscoll must have been grading those papers after school let out. Halleck came home, but Gene McCready was sitting out of punishment in another class for being late. That means Driscoll might have run into Gene Friday afternoon and asked him about it. That's what I figured. Of course, Gene could have told Bob later. Yeah, he could have. Well, Robert Halleck's the boy, all right, Jase. He lied about where he was Saturday night, and Gene was working at the theater. Maybe yes, maybe no. You get the autopsy report yet? Oh, yeah, yeah. Came in this morning. What time did Driscoll die? Uh, between uh, 9.30 and 10.30 Saturday night. Then we can't eliminate Gene McCready. Why not? He starts taking theater tickets at 6.30, but the box office closes at 9 when the main feature goes on again. He's got nothing to do after that. His work's finished. Well, I didn't think of that. You better give me the hatchet, Sheriff. I'll need it. Sure. Got it locked in the drawer here. What's your plan? You go out to the school, get Bob Halleck, and bring him to his father's store. I'll meet you there. Would you want Gene McCready, too? He's not in school. He's supposed to be home sick. We can pick him up later. I don't want him and Robert together. Ranger, you're crazy. Crazy, I tell you. Now, calm down, Mr. Halleck. You admit the hatchet comes from your place. No. A minute ago, you said it did. Well, it disappeared months ago. It was lost. It got lost again in a cattle tank. Where's your car? Out back, through that door. All right, let's look it over. Your son was using this car Saturday night. Yes. Why? What are you looking for? Hatchet had to be carted away from Driscoll's, and there was blood on it. I'm looking for a stain. Well, you don't see any, do you? No. But I see a spot on the front seat that's cleaner than the rest. You smell that? It's been rubbed with gasoline. Ranger, you're wrong. You gotta be wrong. My kid wouldn't do a thing like that. Out here, Robert. Here we are, Chase. Oh, what's the matter? Why did they take me out of school? Son. Son, whatever you've done, me and your mall stand by you. Now, tell him the truth. You were at the show Saturday. Tell him you were. How about it, Robert? Gene said you just dropped by to pick up ticket stubs. I... I wasn't at the show. Why didn't you tell me? Why? I couldn't. Because of Sadie's father. He'd kill her. You better tell us what happened, boy. Why? Well, I picked up Sadie in the car at 6.30... We went into the movie house to leave the car with Gene and get the stubs. You left the car with Gene? Yes. So it'd be around the theater in case Sadie's pa came by. Well, then what happened? Then we arranged for Gene to meet us out at the crossroads between the Lewis Place and Finney's at 11 o'clock. So I'd have the car to take Sadie home. See? See, Ranger? He didn't have the car all the time. Now, go ahead, Robert. Where did you and Sadie go? We, we went for a ride with... Somebody who picked us up behind the theater. What do you mean by somebody? Who? Sadie's mother. What? Why, Sadie Lewis's mother is dead. No, she isn't. That's what Mr. Lewis tells everybody. They were divorced before he moved here with Sadie. Could that be true, Sheriff? Well, Jace, I don't know. Mike Lewis always said his wife died. She didn't. He just hated her, that's all. And, well, if he finds out Sadie's been seeing her, he'll beat her up. All right, Robert. I think you're telling the truth. There's something I want you to identify. This. Why, that's our old kindling hatchet. Where'd you see it last? Well, the shack. Me and Gene built a shack up in the woods last fall. We go camping up there. I built most of it because Gene, he was working part-time after school at Finney's Ranch. That's right, Jace. Gene did work for Finney for a while. Come on, Sheriff. We'd better go pick him up. <laughs> Gene McCready wasn't at his home, and he wasn't sick. We got the location of the shack he built with Robert Halleck, got horses, and rode into the woods to look for him. 
There's the shack, Jase. Just through that clump of trees. Yeah. Come on, Sharky. Hey, the door's opening. It's Gene. Howdy, Gene. What are you doing up here? Let's come up to take you into town, Gene. A few things we want to ask you about. Well, like what? Like how you spent Saturday evening between the time you stopped taking tickets and the time you met Robert at the crossroad between the Lewis place and Finney's. Come on, Gene. I'll boost you up behind me. Well, can I... Can I get my jacket? It's inside. Go ahead. Hey, he don't look guilty, Jace. Not a bit rattled. I know. Well, we could be wrong, but you better give me your holster, Sheriff, if he's gonna ride behind you. Yeah, I guess you're... Look out, Jace! Oh! You hit, Sheriff? No, but I hit him. He had a rifle in there. Stepped out shooting just as you leaned over. Oh, you hit me. Yeah. Let's see. There's a flesh wound through the side. I didn't want to hurt him, but Mr. Driscoll wasn't going to let me graduate, the old fool. All right, shut up. Hold still till I fix this wound. Will he be all right, Jace? Yeah. I'm sorry I had to do that, shooting a kid. Yeah, but... His being a kid doesn't make you bulletproof. And it didn't stop him from killing Driscoll. There. All right, Sheriff. Let's rig a litter and carry him in. Gene McCready was just old enough to stand formal trial for the murder of his high school instructor. On September 20th, 1941, he was taken to the state penitentiary at Huntsville to serve out a sentence of 25 years. And here again is the star of our show, Joel McRae. There's a poem that was sent to me by Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez, who's commander of Company B of the Texas Rangers. It's not only amusing, but seems to reflect the thoughts of many a police officer. I hope you'll enjoy hearing it. It's called Not Guilty. I guess I've seen a thousand men go in this jail and out, from tramps with month-old whiskers to rich men with the gout. Not one of them was guilty of the crimes the law accused. Seems they were all just victims of some officer's abuse. From the time the keys are rattled till they're locked up in the cell, their voices, though they differ from a whisper to a yell... The song is always just the same that everyone will sing. I don't see why they put me here. I haven't done a thing. Makes no difference what they've done or how mean the crime has been. When they're locked behind those prison bars, they're always free from sin. Though the evidence be solid and their voice with guilt may ring, they'll stand right up and tell you, I haven't done a thing. Good night, folks. See you again next week. Good night. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Frenchie. Tonight's cast included Tony Barrett, Parley Bear, Mike Barrett, Sam Edwards, Joe Duval, Tom Cook, and Gerald Moore. This story was transcribed and adapted by Joel Murcott, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. Hal Gibney speaking. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. There's music, fun, and prizes Monday through Friday on NBC to help your busy morning along. Tommy Bartlett brings you Welcome Travelers. Walter O'Keefe MCs Double or Nothing. Clever quiz master Bud Collier asks the questions on Break the Bank. Jack Birch presents songs and stories, and Dave Garraway with melody and humor. That's Monday through Friday on NBC. Now, here are the $64 question. Three chimes mean good times on NBC.